Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're on Lake Berryessa in Northern California for some fantastic rainbow trout fishing. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf, and this is Angler West Television. It's a beautiful fall day and we're on Lake Berryessa, one of the region's top fisheries for bass, crappie, catfish, kokanee, landlocked king salmon, and rainbow trout. Today we're targeting rainbows with cripplers and humdingers being the main course on the menu. We're with Jose Alman and Brian Orr who are being introduced to the lake by Sambo Lage. This is our first time out on Lake Berryessa. Uh, Brian and I actually are from Oakdale, so we primarily fish over at New Maloney's, Pardee, Comanche, Amador, so uh, we're, we're stretching out to uh, Berryessa this morning, our buddy Sambo uh, invited us out to come fish the lake that he's familiar with, so we're coming out to check it out. Sam's pretty much going to give us his tips for the day, and we're along for the ride. So, so today we're, we're targeting uh, trout. This, this lake is abundant with uh, every species, bass, crappie, um, salmon, landlocked salmon. Kokanee were phenomenal this year. It was probably one of the best years that we've had. Um, today, though, we're going to look for trout, look for the Eagle Lakers. We're going to head on down to Skeeter's Cove and uh, put some humdingers out. It's a top water bite today, I think, down to about 15 feet, but we're gonna, we're gonna give it a try and find out. We're looking for uh, between 90 and 120 feet of water. At least that's what was going on Sunday. We may have to refine these fish, but uh, yeah, there you go. So we're gonna troll this through right along here. Okay. Try to stay in our 90 and 100 feet of water. Seen a few fish here at about 20 to 30 feet. So uh, running the go fish, I love this thing. Um, it's been really good and it, it is a huge attractor. I've noticed having lines on my downrigger, having the go fish on one, this this outdoes them all. Both kokanee and trout love this thing. Um, pretty awesome stuff. It also has a light on if you go down deeper, uh, which I forgot it had when I was at Pyramid Lake and I didn't get some, some good shots because the water was cloudy, but start using that, that light and that really helps out. Put the trophy trout on. Grab a little bait wax here, trophy trout, put it on the back side of the humbinger to rub a little bit on there just like that, and we're ready to go. That easy, not making a big old mess. There's a good shad concentration here. About 50 feet of this clear water? Um, yeah, start off with 50, then we'll go back, because I'm gonna go 250 feet on the long line, so because of the clear water. Yeah, there you go. That's our... We're at the money. Yeah. We're hitting the money naked today, man. Yeah, that's that's what's been happening. We got the good clear water right now. The yeah, conditions are perfect right now, too. We just had that low pressure come through. Yeah, so I'm tying these on. What I call it a home road knot. There's a million, um, million different ways. Uh, we just tie a little overhand knot like that. Uh, I don't use snaps or anything on these. I really never have. Uh, Pyramid Lake's the only place that you could get away with using some snaps. Uh, we just go through there like that. And then we're just going to tie a, an overhand knot. Fish on. Stop line. There he is jumping. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've, we've got quite a bit of activity here on the screen and Sambo has a fish on on the top line straight behind the boat. So we'll see if maybe we can get another one through this pass. The, the moon has been shining through and they haven't been able to feed at night because I was a little worried about that. It was a bright moon. Not as big as that first one that hit. There he is. Hey, nice one. Bring him on this side. Yeah. It's not done yet. I'm not looking for it. Not yet. <laughs> They're in good shape too. Really clean, nice looking fish. Dog face. Take a step backwards. There we go. Nice fish. Yeah, really nice. Way to go. Grip. Got him on the pink. That's a nice fish. I'm gonna be keeping some because I'm gonna be smoking. So Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you can put them in the live well, I guess, huh? I got a chest, ice chest. We'll put them right here. That's in this a bag that's a typical and nice, clean, cold water fish, man. Beautiful.
This is uh, this is the mainstay for here. It's the Procure Threadfin Shad Gel. Um, kind of what they're feeding on in here. This place is full of shad. Uh, and using the pink glow, the sun hit that thing. This has been amazing for me. It's kind of my new color, so love love the pink. Max. Welcome back to Lake Berryessa. I'm Justin Wolf. We're with Jose Alman, Brian Orr, and Sambo Lage targeting Eagle Lake strain rainbows that were successfully planted several years ago. We're in a fall pattern with cooler surface temperatures, which have brought the bait and trout near the surface, making them prime targets for shad imitating lures, such as the half ounce humdinger. But don't count your fish until they're in the net. Here, Jose. Go ahead, bud. I'm gonna keep a straight line he's on off. this one. Oh, he's off. Dang it. They're hitting it like bam yeah. and getting off today. That was on the big half ounce. Uh, yeah, that's a nightmare. That's what we're talking about right there. I watched him hit it. It didn't look like a big dunk, but... Let's try that one again. Go ahead. I found out it works really good. <laughs> What happened is when I sort of first started reeling the fish in, all of a sudden it uh, got really slack and he started uh, fish swimming right with there. the boat. So uh, once we got done swimming with the boat, uh, he got close and he started fighting. There's a nice fish here. Brian, crippler. you take him. Yeah. That's that new crippler. Oh, oh, dude, that's a nice fish. Yeah. Look at this down and get it out of the way. Just put that crippler on. That's great. What color is that one? It's that white, sh uh, white spotted one. Yeah. It's a white rainbow trout. Yeah, I won't drop this yet. Seems like every time we troll along this wall right here, we're picking up fish. We just uh, hooked up two fish here the last couple of minutes, and uh, we're reeling another one in. Uh, we're catching them right on the cripplers. The cripplers is really hot right now. You got that clip really tight, I think, though, because it didn't release. Okay, I'll lose it. Yeah, just a tad. The good thing about this adjustable. Yeah. I love those. There's another fish on it, or there's fish just jumped out there. Hope nope. not on this okay. one. Okay. There's something that just jumped out there. I thought That's it was a your fish. fish. What's going on? I see there's another one there. There's another fish on Or This is a high drum ideal. Well, there was another fish swirling out there. Yeah, I saw it. I don't know what one it's on. I got this out, but it's not on the rigger yet. There you go. What are you talking about? Yeah, good job, bro. These are such clean fish. Yeah, it's insane, really man. Awesome. Good yeah. job. Yeah. All right, let's drop Came off as we netted them. Okay, you're up next. Real pretty rainbow right there. Okay, come here. Good fish, bud. Tie this real quick. Easy. All right, here we go. Which one? There. Hey, good one. Let's go camera on it. Yeah, all right, 
we're gonna these hook pretty good they're hitting these really hard so uh, we're, we're keeping fish for the smoker and eater today so uh, we're gonna keep this guy it's the color of the you could at least look in yeah so we're still going here uh, it's good there's a good tight cap on it so it seals out really good and uh, we're gonna see if these clips interfere with the picture because the first time I've done that Rainbow trout fishing on Northern California's Lake Berryessa, and so far we've had a great bite going on humdingers and cripplers trolled near the surface at higher speeds, but there's always room for innovation. So these fish are hitting consistently on the top, uh, top few feet of water, so we're going to run a planer board, just kick it out away from the boat a little bit so we can run an additional top line. Uh, the way I like to set mine up is I'll either run an eighth ounce or a quarter ounce egg sinker. Um, ahead of my lure, I like to run a little bit longer leader, so when that planer board comes up and you're netting the fish, the board's not going to interfere with your net. So we're going to put a crippler out. Uh, Glow's been doing well today, so we're going to do this little trout pattern here. Have some thread pin shad procure. So we'll drop this back probably about 50 feet or so, and then I'll put the planer board on, kick it out another 25, so we're running anywhere from 75 to 90 feet behind the boat. So what I have here is an original clear board planer board. Uh, this is something new to me that I've tried over the last year. I absolutely love this. Um, what's nice about it is it weighs only just a few ounces. So I'm running this on uh, just a regular trout rod. This is my 801 trout rod. Uh, <clears throat> so what's nice about this is you don't have to run planer board reels. You don't have to use very heavy tackle. I can use my standard uh, trout tackle and run this planer board here. So you just slide on the clip on your line. Just clip it to your line here. And then what I like to do is just set it down in the water, turn my clicker on, put it here, get it back to however far I want it back, lock it in, and watch it come out. So what's, what's nice about this is when we're running a bunch of shallow rigs or top lines, it allows us to spread out our presentation in an even wider pattern to cover uh, a bigger swath through here and also uh, lets us do more top lines with only having limited space. So we're gonna run, I believe, four down riggers, one planer board out of this side, and then possibly one on the outside, so we'll have six rigs going. So another advantage to the planer board, uh, which I do a lot, is when we're running back towards the shorelines, you wanna get, get in close to the shore, you can put those things almost on the shoreline uh, and get those fish that are holding shallow and up along the banks. Fish on planer board. Just put this guy out just a few minutes ago. Fish on. Oh, nice, nice one. one. Nice one. That's a key, man. So I'm putting this hum uh, orange humdinger half ouncer. This is uh, one of our favorites from Max, and I got the action disc on here. Uh, you pinch this down with the pliers and put it on, and it secures that. We're going to run this a little higher uh, and see what kind of action it gives us with this thing. And I'm switching around, try to get this bite going. But he's got nice fish on that planer board. You got that rainbow crip on there? Yeah. Is that the glow? The glow rainbow we just put on. You got a net, Brian? Yeah, but he's still out a little ways. How far back you go, Jose? This one was back about 90 feet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he's a good one. I think you got an Eagle Laker on there, man. That's a, that's a decent fish. Getting those planers off to the side like that, you know, when you cruise over your fish, those fish jet out like that, and that's when you catch those. The guys that load those things up, they'll do two on each side. Yep. Really do well. It's a really nice fish when you get that planer board to stay underwater like it is right now. I mean, that planer board's totally underwater, so um, you know you got a good fish on when you got yeah. that planer board underwater. He's, he's an eagle. You know, these fish have been showing up more and more. Last year, we got some really good heavy fish, and uh, they're in here in, in abundance. I can't believe that planer board's underwater. <laughs> There's the um, planer board. It just came up, so we're getting close to netting this fish. I want to lift this rod right here, Sambo. Yeah. There you go, perfect. I'm not done yet, so I'm gonna do that. Oh. That's a nice 
Real nice. Real nice fish. Good job, Good buddy. Guy. Look at that glow rainbow. Good job, bud. Good job. Nice job, man. So check out this yeah. check out this planer board I was talking about earlier, running a little bit longer leader, and this is why I run that longer leader. When you're netting that fish, the planer board's up out of the way. It's, you're not risking knocking the hook out of it. So yeah. there you go. I like that setup. Hey everybody, I hope you're enjoying today's episode from Lake Berryessa where we're trolling for rainbow trout. Now I want to show you a couple new items that you're seeing in the show today that I think are really fun and interesting. First, the Max Lure Double D Dodger. For years they've had out the smaller 4.4 inch size and the large 7.8 inch size. But now, we've got the new mid-size Dodger, the 5.8 inch, which I think is gonna match up with a lot of lures a little better than the smaller size or the larger size has. I think the fish are really gonna like this new mid-size Dodger. Now also, we are using planer boards today. Now planer boards are something that I've seen and, and you know, wish that uh, I used a, a long time ago, but I've never really gotten into it because I just haven't had the right board or the right equipment or the right knowledge or, or whatever, but I've seen them used so effectively that now that I've found something that I really like, it, it's kind of fun and, and makes the whole concept of fishing even more fun. So what we've got are the clear boards here. And clear boards, what I like about them is how small and light and simple they are. They are going to be effective on the tackle that you already have, like Jose is saying in the show you can use these on the rods and reels and the line that you already have. There's three sizes, the small, the medium, and the large. In today's episode, we're using the medium size, which is probably the most versatile and most, use, most useful for your typical trout fishing. Now, if you're using very small lures or trolling flies or something like that, you might want to go with a smaller size. Or if you're using large lures or uh, live bait or something like that, or you want to troll very fast, then the larger board is going to work better for you. This is the large size. Now they all come packaged like this. They come included with two downrigger clips and the pins, everything you need to, to get the fishing. And also two boards in each package, one for starboard, one for port, left and right side of your boats, right? Now this episode, like almost all the other episodes, are available on YouTube for you to watch again. And in fact, the segment with Jose that you've just watched showing how to use these boards is also a separate YouTube video that you can go to and watch as many times as you like. And while you're there, please subscribe. Now, let's go back to Lake Berryessa and do some more trout fishing. Welcome back to Lake Berryessa. I'm Justin Wolf. We're into some outstanding quality fish like this one that took a crippler trolled behind a side planer. Nice Berryessa fish right That's there. Beautiful fish, man. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is the Max Glow Series. And I don't know, I call this the rainbow pattern, but uh, it's got the pinks and, and the blue and just a, a beautiful, uh, in the sun, there you get a little bit of the sparkles they got in there too. This thing is deadly. And we're doing about two seven to three miles an hour. And you get that action on the tip right there. That's the action you're looking for. Uh, and with the side planer over to the side, man, you can't ask for anything better than that. Uh, what I'm using here to store my gear is what's called a leader mate. This is actually a leader mate mini. Uh, I use this on most of my trout rods. It stores your stuff nice and neat. You put your dodger in, wrap the line around and store your, store your rig. So what's nice is when you get to your next fishing hole or when you bring it from home already set up is you can just take this off, unwind it, your dodger comes right out, you can change your rig or you can start fishing. Yeah, and then this pops off. Uh, the way these leader mates are designed is, is they have a hole that passes through here. You'll notice that one end is smaller, one end is, is much wider. So you put the wide end on your rod first, slide it over here, down on the grip, and it holds snug. So we can store this basically the opposite way. The way I like to do it is I like to put my, my blade in from this side. My preference is to wrap the line underneath the bottom, just over the main line slightly here. Hook your lure into your leader mate, snug it up, and you're good to go. So the bite slowed down just a little bit today, so what we're going to do is we're going to change up and we're going to go to some dodgers and sling blades. Uh, this one here is a Double D Dodger. It's Max new five and a half inch Double D Dodger. It was just released a couple of months ago. Um, I haven't even fished it yet, so we're going to give it a try today. Attached to it, uh, we have a leader about uh, 28 inches long with a 
mic uh, wiggle hoochie that we made uh, earlier today with the uh, UV bill. It's a white uh, hoochie with uh, gold hooks, uh, size two. So we're gonna go out and we're gonna fish this about one five to one seven miles an hour today to see if we can get this bite to speed up a little bit. It was rough, uh, red hot this morning and all of a sudden it died down a little bit. So uh, we wanna see if we can get this bite to pick up again. Yeah, we got the planter board running now close to the shoreline, try to catch a, get a fish that's laying on there ready to ambush some bait. The temperature's about 60, there's some fish in here too. Yeah. 30 feet, which is where I'm at on that rear. Yeah, so it's nice to be able to have the versatility of running those planers like that up against the shoreline. Yeah, the one you made yeah, up. Yeah, just made it. Oh, that new double D? Is yeah, that the... this is the pink double D. We'll do five and a half inch. Yeah, bite slowed down, so we made a change, slowed it down a little bit, changed our presentation, added a dodger, and fish on. That's the five and a half inch. So this is the wiggle hoochie you just put together? Yep. UV blade, gold hooks. He's hooked really good. You see he's got two good hooks in him. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, there would be no show. So please thank them when you can. Now, get out there and do some great fishing.